Morning guys. So, a slightly technical one today. I thought it was a good opportunity for me to show you guys how to connect, if required of course, an HCO5 Bluetooth module to something like your Crossfire so that you can dynamically relay the likes of Mavlink. Now, this is particularly useful in this sort of case. I've got a little MyFly Dream Tracker and you can see there's a little HCO5 module which is configured to talk to my crossfire on power up and effectively it just gives you a wireless serial port it's great kind of does the job but um it can be a, well it's not difficult it's a little problematic to get running sometimes and um the idea really is that i give you a quick rundown of the core steps to make this happen it's nothing complicated but um i think it should be a little bit clearer once you see how it gets done anyway here it goes Okay, so first off, what I wanted to do was very quickly talk to you about the wiring. Now, there's nothing particularly complicated about this. You'll see over here I've got the HCO5 module and I've got an Arduino version 3. Essentially, what we're going to do is connect the 3.3 volt through to the EN button. You can see it's labeled nice and clearly there. We're going to get the 5 volt to VCC. So you can see the green one, the 5 volt is going through to VCC. We've got the ground all the way through again, and that goes to ground. And then we have TX to TX and RX to RX. Now, it's worth noting, most of us would almost automatically in this game think, okay, well, you swap the TX and RX around. For some reason with this, it doesn't quite work like that. It's TX to TX and it is RX to RX. And you can see a close-up of the board over here. There's not much to it. So, once you've wired those in with your DuPont cables, what you're going to do is load up your Arduino Sketch Manager. Let me clear my desktop a bit. And the aim here is to go into Tools and Serial Monitor. What's key is to type AT and click Send. This is quite normal. If you get an error, it's normal. Um, I'm also going to draw your attention to the fact that I've got CLNNR turned on and 38,400 board. Now, my HCO5 modules seem to use this by default, but I've read on the net about some of them using 9,600, so it's entirely possible you might need to try a couple of different options here. Now, I'm gonna run AT again. Boom, and we have an okay, fantastic news. Now, I'm gonna draw your eyes to this little crib sheet I've got here, and this is as simple as follow these commands because there's no point you reinventing them we want to copy paste them all across making sure that you don't put any white space in at the end um, so from beginning letter to end letter um, the exact meaning of these commands well if you want to read them go read in the manual I'm not bothered because I have done the manual and I eventually worked this all out and the aim of this video is to make your life a little bit easier bump, bump, bump. right now we get to a very important bit AT inquiry and you'll notice I've got the space here what I'm telling the module to do is to now search for my crossfire module and it has returned that string well I have to try copy paste again there you go what you can note here I've got the next three lines over here and you'll notice the values that have been transposed across. So the 4, comma, 3e, comma, you want to take these across and swap the colons for a space. So if we took, say, this one as an example, we're going to make it look like so. And change the commas like so. Make sense? Now, at this point, we're going to say, okay, module, let's pair to my crossfire, and I'm going to issue the command, and that should come back with an okay, if all goes well. Thank you very much. And then we're going to do a bind. And finally, we are going to tell it to come up with a link. And we should, at this point, start seeing some binary data busy bouncing across the screen. There you go. Now, you'll notice those spaces. This is because we're running at the wrong board rate because over here, Crossfire runs at 57,600. So let's change this to 57,600. And there we go, a nice binary string of data. And that's it. 
Now, at this point, we are good to go. We can close off the module, we can disconnect. It's ready to go to wire straight into whatever you want. And in my case, I'm obviously using a little MFD tracker. Well, it should work. Good luck, guys.